Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars. And I have a notion now about what the middle astral planes are like. Around uh, four, level four, around there. I think that area is where people are fairly, uh, the astral form is fairly um, well sol solidified and well formed. Like, it looks like people are when you look at them in the real, in the uh, 3D world, the physical world, except that they're astral. And I think one of the characteristics of that part of the astral realm is that, for one thing, men tend to lord it over women. It's a patriarchal domination kind of area in the, in the, in uh, for four and four negative, right? Fourth level negative. And uh, the other thing is that judgments abound. Like, people are always judging other people. And other people feel bad about being judged. <laughs> and so people have a lot of opinions about other people and how they should live their lives. And everybody's afraid to... Um, to depart from the consensus about, of, of their group about how they should be. Ugh. <laughs> I call this a purgatory world. In fact, when people make love in that, in that area of uh, fourth subplane negative, they, instead of saying something positive about it, the, the men are saying, purgatory, purgatory, purgatory. <laughs> so... I asked one of them once from a great distance, I said, why are you saying pur purgatory when you're enjoying yourself? And, and he says, uh, I never thought about it. That's just the way I learned to do it. <laughs> and so, I, so purgatory, I guess, is like that. It's when we depend on other people for our ideas about things and, and we don't enjoy things that, that are, you know, we don't find the enjoyment in things that can be greatly enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm saying goodbye to fourth subplane negative. <laughs> well, so, I just had a, uh, when I concluded talking about that, that purgatory story, I heard from a long, long way away, I heard the nature spirit, the body elemental that's charged with that thought, and it was embarrassed. I didn't know that body elementals could get embarrassed. But it was upset with me for saying that, and it wanted to clarify that it only thought that thought purgatory when it couldn't conclude with its business. And so, so, so then I said, well, would it be okay then at the very conclusion to say a word like hallelujah, or some kind of word like that, some kind of happy word, and it... It was in such a temper, it just stalked away and groused off. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe it'll think about it. it BEs don't have very big, um, you know, mental processes. They usually have like one function to carry out. Sometimes I think of them as bees, B-E, bees, you know, because some, some um, body elementals, they have that quality of, of stinging us or goading us into action or, or doing something that we don't like, in which case it, it, if you interfere, it's kind of like stepping into a hornet's nest, <laughs> a swarm of bees. <laughs> but most of them aren't like that. Most of them are very helpful. And they only get out of tune or out of temper when we program them with some kind of information that's not natural to them, you know? Because love and light is their quality, just like it is ours. <laughs> well, that's enough of that. So this is further to the discussion of the fourth level of the astral plane negative. And we were talking a little about judgment and uh, the opinion of the group that you have to do and have hold the same opinions as they do and behave in the same way as they do and how these are hallmarks of that level of the astral plane. A kind of uh, place where free will just doesn't exist, you know. And so I thought I'd give an example about that, which is a rather extreme example. And this has to do with 
when someone else has a spiritual teacher that is not your spiritual teacher. You know how folks on earth congregate around particular spiritual teachers? Like, for instance, Christ is esteemed by many as a very as the, uh, the most important spiritual teacher on earth. And, in, and among many other people, the Buddha is. And, and in addition to these two great teachers, there are many other teachers, uh, spiritual teachers in all levels that have their adherents. Excuse me just a minute. So there are all kinds of spiritual groups that have their adherents. And, um, and one of the worst insults that you can do to any spiritual group is to tell them that you don't like their spiritual teacher. You know, and this can take all kinds of subtle, and it, what it results in is massive group condemnation. They will rise as one and turn against you, the single individual who doesn't like their teacher, who is, who means very much to them in terms of spiritual leadership and, and a way to live by and all that. It, it, it's the be all and the end all in some cases, you know. So, and, and as if that weren't enough, lots of times some aspect, some shadow aspect of that spiritual teacher or that guru or that ascended master, or that great teacher of the, who is on the astral realm will attack you personally. What a fix to be in! What a place in the astral realm to find yourself in, don't you think? So, so actually, I find myself in that position right now. And I've tried all kinds of ways of getting out of it. I, I'm just stuck in fourth dimension, fourth subplane negative right now. And what I find is that the students of this teacher that I, that I feel is not my, Christ is my teacher. You know, I'm willing to say it, Christ is my teacher. Um, but there are a lot of other good teachers out there and there are an awful lot of groups that are willing to pillory you and condemn you if you don't believe in their teacher. Go figure. Because all the teachers are heading towards the light and heading up and planning on God consciousness and like that. You would think they'd form an alliance. I hope they formed an alliance. But even if they have formed an alliance, this thing about social contracts and, and scapegoating and like bloodletting and all this stuff is still happening here on earth for the groups that feel that somebody else is not a member of their group and most particularly not an adherent of their spiritual teacher. Ha! Huh. So, so it comes in the form of trick questions like just now um, I was talking on the psychic plane. I was trying not to, you know. I was heading home. I was getting kind of tired. I'd been out in nature all day long. I was heading home, and somebody asked me on the psychic plane kind of a trick question. It was about their spiritual teacher, and they asked about a past lifetime in which I, I had known that spiritual teacher, and something bad had happened. They asked me what had happened. And when I explained what had happened, they became extremely furious, like full of like unconscious curses about how I had dissed their guru. Okay, first of all, it was their question. I should have been astute enough to ask them to talk to their own spiritual teacher or pursue that person's uh, um, um, teachings. But since you probably might be curious, I will tell you what happened in that other lifetime. I may have mentioned it before. It was like this. I was a child in India. I don't know if it, it was kind of a good story in the long run. See, that's um, everybody's taking their boats home from the lake right now, and they have to go uphill to get there, so it's a little bit noisy. You'll oh, pardon me. <laughs> and the sun's going to be setting pretty soon. So anyway, this thing happened to me. I'm kind of in a quandary. And so, about that lifetime, what happened was, I was a, a, a child of two or three. I just learned to walk. I was in India. And um, I was with my mom at, the, at, the, at a market. And you know, the markets in India, they're not like markets in the United States. It's like an open-air market, and it's, there's a lot of commotion and confusion. And a sadhu walked by. He was, um, he was a um, 
to me, he was an older person, you know, but probably, I guess, maybe in his 30s. And he was, uh, he had the, the typical sadhu appearance. I'll see if I can find <clears throat> a picture. And, and I was intrigued by his spiritual air. Even at the age of two or three, I had had an interest in spirituality for some lifetimes, you know. So, just like magically, I started following him. And, and while I was following him, probably wasn't even aware of it, I lost my mother in the crowd. And I, f I found myself in completely uh, strange surroundings. And, and he turned. And he saw me following him, and he saw the look in my eyes that I wanted to be a spiritual student of his, and he threw me down into a gutter, okay? And there I was, completely lost. And you know, life is not of much value in India. At least back then it wasn't. And so I was very fortunate. I was crying in the gutter, and a woman found me uh, who who raised me up as if I were her own child. I was extremely fortunate in that. And in my latter years, after I had had a husband and children and raised my children and taken care of my husband, uh, there was time at the end of my life for me to practice kirtan. There were years in which I was able to practice kirtan every day and sing with the other ladies in the temple. It's pretty cool. It's a very cool experience. But the thing is, the sadhu, was the same person as the spiritual teacher to which these other, this other person referred. Now, what are you going to do, you know? For me, that kind of person is not the kind of person for me. For the next person, it might be just their cup of tea. But I think we, as spiritual people, during this process, when everybody's thoughts are becoming transparent to everybody else, I think we need to stand back and be very copacetico with all the other spiritual groups, religious beliefs, and their spiritual teachers, their uh, ascended masters, their gurus, and like that. If we are Christian, let's not laugh at people who are Buddhist. Their, Buddhism is their sincere belief. If we are, are people who have had bad experiences in past lifetimes, with, with spiritual teachers that are much revered by groups today, then let us give them the space to do what they wish and let us be careful not to be criticizing them in any way. For this is their choice towards the higher consciousness. Okay, And most particularly, let us not curse other people simply because they are not on our spiritual path. Let us not harbor um, vengeance or um, hardness of heart or a desire to get even with them for not do, believing what we believe. Otherwise, as the ascension process continues, we will create for ourselves this terrible level of hell, or I should say purgatory, because there in the middle there, that place is where we are not free to express ourselves, our true selves, because of the opinion of other people. <laughs> So, so there's something about forgiveness. It just like immediately lifts up the heart and lifts up the soul to a higher level of the astral plane. And it's not an easy thing to do. I mean, in my case, there's people that have been pursuing me on the astral plane for years for this reason. And, and I used to take it very seriously. Witchcraft, no, I don't think so. You know, curses, no, I don't think so. All these, like, charms and things and, like, manipulation of the second chakra to get me to be a different way. I don't think so. You know, I am I, like that. So, today, it got to be pretty excruciating again, you know, pretty excruciating. So, finally, I thought, why not just laugh and let it go, you know, make a little fun. Make it, make it a light-hearted situation. And if that doesn't work, because most likely it's not the spiritual teachers that are involved, most likely it's the group consensus, it's the social con con contract of the group that is causing this. And if the purpose of the group, I mean, this is just a little bit sneaky, okay? If the purpose of the group is to 
be in consensus each with the other because everyone is concerned about everybody else's opinion then a little light-hearted um, making fun of, of the people might have them go away and so I tried a little of that I didn't want to be too like heavy duty but like a little kid you know something like oh my gosh how silly you're being <laughs> this is so silly I can't believe it <laughs> like that so if I think of anything else you know, because I know there are more of you going through this right now. I will let you know. I know we don't know much of what is going on during this process. I, I'm sure that we're all taken care of, you know. I'm sure it's going to be okay. This is a little bit of a bumpy road today, but I'm sure it will be just fine. Love you all lots. Take care of yourselves. Stick to your spiritual guns. It's all right. It's okay to be yourself. Love you lots. Uh-huh. <laughs> Take care.